All right, many people will say that the product is more important than the process, but I believe that the process and how you get there is more important than the product is. This is Inky Johnson. His mother had him when he was 16 years old. He was born on the east side of Atlanta. He lived in a two-bedroom house with 14 people in there. He had to sleep on the floor uh, most of the time. He had eight uncles in there that were all in and out of prison. So pretty soon he came up with the idea that he had to make it to the NFL so that he could support his family one day. So him and his cousin every night would race light pole to light pole until one night a coach came by and saw them and he signed them up for organized football. But the thing was after practice when most kids would get him, he had to stay there and wait because his mom worked at Wendy's. And he would often have to stay there until 11 to 12 at night until she would get off work. After she would get there, he would run to his mother and tell her to please turn the lights on, that like he needs to do extra drills so that way he can make it to the NFL, so that way she'll never have to work another day in her life. He earned a scholarship to the University of Tennessee to play football. His freshman year, he played special teams, and his sophomore year, he broke the starting lineup. He had a really strong sophomore season, and at the, uh, in the summer going into his junior year, he was in the film room watching film when his coach came up to him and told him that he had great news. He asked him what it was, and he said that uh, he's a projected top 30 draft pick. He said all he has to do is play the next 10 games, and he'll be a multimillionaire. As soon as he heard the news, he called his mother and told her that they would no longer have to struggle and that they would no longer have to uh, like have Christmas without gifts and without any food. In the first game of his junior year, he shut down Cal University and played great. In the second game, around the halftime, before halftime, uh, he was coming down the sideline, and he had a big collision with an offensive player. He ended up blacking out, and when he woke up, he wasn't able to move. His teammates told him that like he has to get up because like he's their lockdown cornerback, but he said like he couldn't move at all. So they carried him out on a stretcher, and they took him to the hospital. When he uh, when he got to the hospital, the doctor said. All he could hear was the doctor saying, hurry up, we need to rush this guy to the emergency room. He's about to die. When he woke up from surgery, the doctor told him that he had busted a teplavian artery in his shoulder, and they had to remove one of the main veins from his leg to replace it in order for him to live. He told him that he had good news and that he had bad news. He told him that the good news is, is that he would, he would be able to live, but he said the bad news is, is that there's a strong possibility he'll never be able to play football again. It really crushed him because that's all he'd been working for ever since he was seven years old. To this day, he gives motivational speeches and talks to people about the importance of staying strong even through tragedies. And that's it.